iPhones are really great phones and their usability gets even better thanks to the App Store which boasts of over 2 million apps. But there are good apps and there are bad apps. So how do we figure out which ones are the essential apps for our iPhone? I'm Akshay from bbomb.com and in this video I'll be telling you about the 10 essential apps that you must have on your iPhone. Well, let's get started. If there is one thing the iPhone does better than most, it's photography. Though the camera captures vivid and good photos, but with a little bit of editing they end up looking even better. Well, thankfully, there is a really great app for doing just that and it's called MuseCam. This app is an extremely powerful but surprisingly easy to use photo editor for the iPhone. It has a host of features including the basic ones like the exposure, contrast, highlights and shadows, along with some advanced ones like RGB curves, color by color adjustment for hue, saturation and luminance and much more. The app will definitely improve the quality of your photos and is a must have for anyone who edits photos on the go. Moving on to email clients, I had actually chosen Cloud Magic for this, but then Cloud Magic became Newton and well, no one wants to pay $50 a year just for email. So the email client of choice for me is now Spark. Spark is not as good as Cloud Magic was and it doesn't have the color coded inbox. But really, it's a pretty great app nonetheless. It's fast, it automatically categorizes your mail and will let you quickly make your way to inbox zero. The app offers features such as snoozing emails, Swiping to mark emails as read, pin them, delete them, or archive them. You can even customize the swipe actions if the default ones are not to your liking. All in all, the app makes for a good email client for the iPhone and will definitely make managing emails a breeze. Next up, taking notes. While it's definitely not easy to take notes on an iPhone, if you really must, you should use an app like Microsoft OneNote. The app is free and is very well designed. Your notebooks in the OneNote app are synced seamlessly to all your devices and can even be accessed on the web, so you can read them anytime. The editing options in the iOS apps are plenty and can let you create checklists, bullet or number lists, Add audio notes, add images, and format text in the bold, italic, or underlined formats. The app is very well designed and it works without a hiccup. Coming on to To Do Lists. To Do List is a great app as we all have a lot of things to do no matter what your day job might be. So, this To Do List app allows users to create a variety of projects that in my case are about work, personal, shopping, etc. You can also add filters so that you can manage your tasks better. The app is free but it has some premium features that you can enable by paying the app fees. Although for most people the free app should work just fine. Adding to-do items to the app is easy and the task can be easily marked as done by a simple swipe. Users can also postpone tasks. The default keyboard on the iPhone has been improved somewhat in iOS 10, but it still does not have features such as swipe to type, which I personally find very useful in Gboard. This keyboard not only supports swipe to type, but you can also search and send GIFs directly from the keyboard, look up something on Google, Search emojis to find them quicker and even change the look of the keyboard using custom themes. The keyboard is really great and the swipe to type functionality works spot on all the time. If you are like me, you probably get distracted by your phone a lot. Well, if these distractions are causing you to lose productivity, there is a really great app called Forest that might help you with that. This app allows you to set up a timer for the amount of time that you want to focus on your work and not use the phone. 
The app requires you to plant a seed which will grow in a time frame of 10 to 120 minutes. And if you leave the app in between, the tree will die. Trust me, you don't want to do that. Every day you create a forest consisting of all the plants that you were able to completely grow and even the dried up ones that you weren't able to grow. This app basically gamifies the entire concept of not using your phone while you're supposed to be working and the concept is pretty good. We all know that iPhones don't allow sharing files and media via Bluetooth, which can be quite a hassle if you're trying to transfer files between devices. To solve this, you can use ShareIt. ShareIt is an app that basically creates a Wi-Fi hotspot on your phone and allows other devices with ShareIt to access your shared files through that Wi-Fi hotspot. To send files from ShareIt, simply tap on Send. Then choose the file, photo or contact that you want to transfer. You can then simply tap on the ShareIt avatar for the person that you want to transfer the file to. And that's all. On number 8, there are a lot of situations where you might have pictures on your iPhone that you wouldn't want anyone else to see. Say you were at a party that you don't want anyone to know about. You can simply use an app such as Vault to safely store your images. The app is protected by a pin and the data inside the app can only be accessed by entering the pin. To add photos to the vault, you can simply tap on photos, tap on the plus icon on the bottom of the screen and add all the photos that you want to import into the app. The app will then prompt you to delete the photos from your library. Simply tap on delete and make sure you go to the photos app and delete the photos from the recently deleted folders as well. Moving on to number 9, the music app on the iPhone is disliked by a lot of people. It tries to do a lot of things all at once and it usually fails miserably. If you are one of the people that simply don't want to use the default music app, you should definitely check out Cesium. Cesium is an amazing alternative app for playing music. It automatically hooks into your music library and shows all of your songs in a simple yet appealing interface. Songs that are not available on your device locally but are added to your iCloud music library are available to be downloaded. If however, you only want to see your local music, you can simply turn off show iCloud items in the app settings. It also has some very nice swipe gestures that you might find extremely useful. The settings for the app have a lot of customization options that you can play around with. Last but not the least, let's talk about calendars. If you want a more powerful, more intuitive calendar app, then check out Fantastical 2 for the iPhone. It is simply the best calendar app there is. The app offers a lot of features, notable among which are the ability to create new reminders directly inside the app, check items of the reminders from the app itself, create new events using natural language processing, and a lot more. The app is immediately appealing and if you do use calendars and reminders as often as I do, Fantastical is pretty much indispensable. Well those were the 10 essential apps for the iPhone. I hope you found this video useful and if you did, hit that like button. Also subscribe to our channel for more cool tips, tricks and how to's and until next time, thank you for watching.